Welcome back guys to Shapes with me, Master Dynamic. This is our second episode. Thanks to DNSR for your comment. I wasn't sure if anybody was watching or wanted to see any more in the series, but thanks to DNSR, we're back with episode two. So here we are at the Make Almost Anything machine once again. And I rewatched, uh, okay, I have to relearn all my controls. I rewatched my last episode just to make sure of where we left off and uh, to make sure that I covered everything that I wanted to in the previous episode. And I think I did. I think that we are at the point where we are ready to start painting our shapes. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and built our painting, uh, paint mixers and painting module here, which we'll go over in just a second. But I did want to mention that uh, all we have to do now that we've got this first section done where we build our first shape, which I think we left off where we were right about here, where we had decided uh, which shape was going to pass through via this line here. And um, I think I covered this. If you have any questions about how I did this, if I didn't explain it in a way that was understandable, uh, just leave me a comment and let me know and I will go back over it and try to answer your questions. Um, but I think that um, I, I said several times that we use a double um, knot gate here to make sure that we have either a zero or a one on the line. And that's very important for the logic uh, section of the machine that follows. So I just want to repeat that, that uh, uh, down here, we want to have the, the uh, four different signals on this line um, so that we can get the gray signal out and also the null signal. So we need the null, the gray, the one and the zero. Uh, but up here, I think we're just gonna need, uh, actually we repeat the same exact thing up here where we wanna have the same control for the next step, which is where we uh, stack the two shapes together. So we left off here where we had each of the two um, shapes. Uh, let's see, we had the two sides of the shapes because this is one side of the shape, but basically the top of the shape. And then this one is making the bottom of the shape. And then we have to stack those together. So we use exactly the same logic that we used below uh, up here. So this line tells us that whether or not we have a shape uh, on, on this side, that is the top of the shape. If we have a top shape, then we get a one here. We either get a one or a zero here. And the same thing here, we either get a one or a zero, uh, depending on whether or not we have a shape that forms the bottom of the shape, okay? And then we pass it through the same exact truth table as we did before uh, into a stacker with the bypass built in. So we have uh, the, the top shape come across this way with the option to continue just in case the shape, you know, sometimes the shape may not have all four pieces or may not have a stacked piece even in, in on each layer because each layer can have either one, two, three, or four pieces of a, I'm gonna call it an entire shape, um, but basically the layer can have either one, two, three, or four pieces of this, the uh, shape. Um, so you have to be able to account for that. So in case there's only a bottom shape, then that would go this way and only a top shape that would go this way. And then if you have a complete shape, then it goes this way. And we use the exact same logic gates, exact same setup as we did previously to uh, decide whether which of the three shapes we're going to have, because no matter what happens, we're either going to have a full shape go through or one or the other half of the shape that is the top sh of the shape or the bottom of the shape so either way uh, that's how we pass that so that's exactly the same logic that we pass through there and so that moves us on to painting the shape which is here and the way that we've done this is we'll go back over to here and i've done this um mixer paint mixer that um, it, it it just takes in the three each one of these once again these are the four uh, sections of the shape so this is the the same exact layout is here top top right top left 
bottom left, bottom right. So this is doing this exact same thing. So it's taking the signal um, that comes from here, the same. Okay, keep switching lanes. But here's the blue signal that we talked about in the previous episode where the blue signal is the color. So it takes that blue signal and brings it across here and uses it for each of the shape sections. So then it's up to you when you design your machine, you'll have to sort through your shapes depending on, you know, if you don't use the same layout as I did, you'll just have to sort through your, your shapes and your colors to make sure that you match them up. If you're doing the top right, make sure your top right matches your top right. Um, that's why that I designed uh, the shape that we're using, um, which is actually here because now I have a second layer. Or, or is that the shape? Yeah, that is the shape. Okay, I changed it since the last episode. Um, but uh, it's the uh, the same shape. And, uh, uh, but that's why I gave each shape a, a, a different shape and a different color to help me keep, keep them straight. So you'll have to do the same thing. Uh, but anyway, what we do is we take the three Okay, so we're going to be switching back and forth between the electronics layer and the physical layer. So in the physical layer, we take one lane of each of the primary colors, and then we divide it into four sections. And I kind of like the way I did this here. Um, and it's fairly straightforward, I think, once you, once you wrap your head around it. It's fairly straightforward. So what we do is we decided that when you look at, uh, let me see, let me pull up one of these um, constant signals here. This kind of makes it easy. So when you when you look at uh, any given color on the spectrum here, um, red, you know, okay, well for red I need a red, obviously. Same with green, same with blue. Uh, but when you get into yellow, then you know that uh, red and green makes yellow, and uh, blue and red makes purple, and then blue and green makes cyan, and then uh, all three make white, and actually it's, it's uh, all three primary colors or any two primary colors mixed like a yellow plus the other primary color or basically any mixed color plus any mixed color uh, but but anyway any any mix of the three colors will give you white and then the gray is obviously uncolored um, so uh, what I did here was depending on the color that's coming in I just put a comparator next to each gate and decided like for a green for a green i don't need red okay uh so i so since this is no i'm sorry this is the green let me start over i i uh, couldn't tell what color i was looking at for green um obviously i would need green if the color here was green so that would that would only turn on if the color here was green which would be obviously this this lane here but they all feed into uh, different well we'll get into that in just a second they all get into different lanes but anyway so each each one goes its own path so if I need yellow then that turns on this lane and that goes into a mixer to make yellow uh, white goes through here and we're gonna watch we'll see the white uh, so this one covers the the green signal so these are the four colors that green makes which is green yellow white and cyan and then here's the blue section, and blue can make cyan, white, blue, and purple. And then the same here for red, and red can make purple, yellow, white, and red. And what I did was I just put the common colors next to each other. That is red and blue makes purple, and blue and green makes cyan. I put those next to each other just for convenience sake. But of course the whites are spread apart uh, just because you can't have you know everything next to its counterpart. It, it's 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 counterpart very easily uh, or really at all because uh, there's only so much adjacency um, but anyway so the so since this is making white then the red uh, that passes through here goes into this paint mixer right here and also the blue goes into the same mix to make purple and then that purple is fed up this way into the next mixer and since we're adding green to it then we're no longer getting purple, but instead we're getting white because now we've mixed an extra color. And then when we get up to here, we have a similar um, storage system as we do with the shapes in that this can, this will store, uh, like if we need an uncolored shape, this will just store colors. Or actually, these won't even turn on 
if we don't need a color. So as it runs and as you run through different colors, like let's let's just go down here and I'll show you what happens if we change the uh, the color of the shape. Uh, let's go back down here and find where we, let's see, that would be in this layer and find where we're giving the shape right here. Okay, so now we're giving a two layer shape um, so I think we are working with, uh, I always, uh, forget which one we're working with, but we'll change, uh, this purple. Well, you can't. Okay. So what you have to do is copy this and then, um, paste it back in to edit it. I don't know why they did that. It should be editable, but it's not editable, which is kind of annoying. So you just have to remember to copy it and then paste it. Um, so we're going to change this white, that's the way we'll do it, that way we know, to a, let's say we make it, um, let's make it blue. Uh, and that should affect us over there on that end. And then over here, I'm going to change this green to, let's make that one white. Just uh, so that we can see that there's a change made. Okay, so then as we come over here to the shape colorizer we'll see that it's cranking out a different color now. Now it's blue. So now a different blue lane has opened up here. As you can see, the blue is flowing and it's flowing into now this, uh, well, it's going, it's passing on through there. Um, but if this was like, as you can see, when it was making purple, it was, uh, I'm sorry, when it, when we were making white, we were storing the purple, which was left over from the, uh, the, the white process. Uh, but anyway, that would continue across the board uh, to store color. So as you go through shapes, it will continue to store and bank different colors uh, in the system. So this works exactly the same way as the shapes do, except it's dealing with colors in that the blue color uh, comes up here and goes into this transistor, which either passes the signal through here. And uh, if there is a color, it passes through here and checks to see if that color is gray or not, and uh, gives us a one or a zero so that we can deal with that down the line. And then um, matches the color here to which output we wanna use. And then that goes across here and goes into a four-way painter, which is the way I prefer to do my, my, my make anything machine. And then you have to just align yourself uh, on each of these. Now this progresses in, in case you haven't messed with the four-way painter yet Always remember to put your shape in on the side and your colors in here If you don't do it, then you have to end up you have to you have to completely discombobulate your whole machine In order to rebuild it because uh, if you get it polluted with a, a shape in the color or a color in the shape It's just annoying you have to take everything apart and, and uh, re rebuild everything. But anyway um, so Here's our blue. So anyway, it goes uh, in the same um, format as everything basically in the in the game does. It starts in the upper right hand corner and works its way around clockwise. So this is upper right, lower right, lower left, upper left. Um, that's that's the way the entire game is uh, oriented in that it, it takes the shape that you're looking at, starts at the upper right, and works its way around the shape. Um, clockwise okay so there's our blue going into the top right and there's our shape coming out so then we go into and this um, I figured this out <clears throat> in between episodes and I don't know why I did, it didn't occur to me before but I keep using these um, these uh, meters on the line to uh, to use to verify the shape but you don't have to do that like I don't really need this um, all I have to do is tie this into there, actually. And um, and then I don't need to actually connect that at all. And then I could get rid of that because I can see the shape right there. And then I can just use the counter for a counter. Um, but that's why uh, my shapes were... So let me, um, let me try to say this in a way that makes sense. So if we were to put a extractor here and put a line on it here... And then you put a reader on it. This is the way I was doing it for whatever reason. I don't know why. And when it has this built into it already, right? When all you have to do is put, if I put a constant signal on right here, I can put a red right here. 
And if it's red, it'll flow through this way. And anything else would go into the trash. Like if I was to put, say, blue into this constant signal, then they all go into the trash, all the red ones do. Um, but I kept, instead of doing that, I would just connect a wire from here to here, which, as you can see, it offsets your um, trashing trigger by, you know, however long it takes for the item to pass from here to here. So that's why it kept throwing away the wrong shapes all the time. I don't know if I covered that. I don't think I actually covered that in the last episode, but that was some, an issue that I was... I, I knew that I had, but I was kind of ignoring. I was hoping that I didn't have to cover it, but now that I figured it out, now I can cover it and explain it to you. So I think I fixed it over in my original Make Anything machine, uh, which is running in the background, as you can see. We'll go take a look at it in just a second. Um, but yeah, let me, matter of fact, let me go over there and just show you how that works. Um, so here in my validator, I think that's where I had it. Yeah. Um, well, I'm still doing it in the validator, actually. Uh, but what I did do in between episodes was, and I'm doing the same thing here again, uh, where this, this was kind of not working properly. And that was because I, I was doing it, like I said, I was doing it wrong. All I have to do is tie this signal in to, to here, and then I could eliminate this altogether. Um, but anyway, um, I did find a bunch of those places and I added these little triggers here, uh, to, the original machine, I know I didn't really cover this in the last episode, but I had all these to, to kind of clear the lines. And so I added um, these where it takes the original shape and compares it. Um, and that way it cleans the lines. And so the machine actually runs a little bit faster and a little bit cleaner because it's, uh, it's clearing the junk off the line sooner. Actually, I think I even do it um, down here somewhere. Um, maybe if I can remember where I did it seems like I did it in a few places throughout the machine just to keep the machine clear uh, but anyway that's kind of neither here nor there back over to our make almost anything machine and here we are again so uh, I think I've explained this uh, this machine um, as much as I can um, basically you're doing exactly the same thing except with the color signal as we did with the shape signal. Uh, and then you just have to figure out however you want to mix your colors. I think I do it different in this machine than I do in the other machine. And I can show you how I do it in the other machine if you'd like to see that. It's fairly similar. Um, but I think this one is much uh, simpler and a bit cleaner. I, I do like this mixing machine better than the one that I use on my original machine. Uh, but then basically once you have that set, then you just copy and paste it over. And once again, you might want to give yourself some kind of a little tag to uh, make sure that you line up your electronics layer with your physical layer. Um, I think I did do that. Um, I think it was somewhere in here. I thought I had like a stray, um, piece of belt or something around here somewhere that there it is right there to make sure that I line everything up that that little piece of belt right there just tells me that that's where I line up my electronics layer so that everything lines up when I copy paste so then you copy and paste it over and it would be a good idea when you make your machine not not to make it either right or left-handed but to make it either vertical or horizontal maybe um, so because otherwise now I, I've kind of crammed myself up here. So what we're going to have to do is take this. Once we get this finished, we'll copy this and put it over here. And then we're not going to have room to keep going this way because we're going to run into our other machine. So we're going to have to go this way. And then we're going to also have to go back this way. And then we're going to have to get rid of some of this other like blueprint stuff that I built in my way. So make sure you leave yourself plenty of room. That's the other main thing that you should know. So I think that covers everything for this episode. That is painting your first layer of your shape. Um, so uh, what we did was take each of those color lines as they came out. We passed them through our truth table once again so that we get um, uh, an, a, a definite uh, yes or no on each line. That, you have to have either a one or a zero on your output line. 
because if you haven't used the four-way painter yet, then you're in for a surprise when you find out that if it you don't feed if you don't feed paint in there, it will stop working unless you have um, applied a signal to these each of these inputs. Um, this th this thing will jam up if you have you have to it has to at least have a one or a zero on each of these these lines here. Otherwise, it will jam up, and then you can run it without paint as long as these are all zeros. But if you try to run this and you you don't have enough paint in in the, it will stop until it gets paint in the in the line. So that's something that you should be aware of. But anyway, uh, once you get each of your color lines through here, you just uh, line them up uh, with the proper shape and just stack them in there best you can to get a nice neat look and get everything painted and then then uh, outputs your shape. So now we have our first layer of our shape, which is actually the top layer of our shape. And then we've taken that same uh, shape from our original right here. Here's our original shape right here, which is two layers. As we said, we've taken the first layer off of it right here and passed it up this way into this set of processors. And so there's our shape. And then we just take that same signal over here to validate it on our output so that we can stack it with the next layer of the shape, which will go right here. So all we have to do is copy and paste this entire unit right over here on top of this. And then we'll have our second shape. So we'll do that in the next episode. I'll do an actual copy and paste of the entire thing and show you how you line it up and stuff. Um, this over here was just some tests and things that I was doing, which I'm going to actually just get rid of right now because we don't need it. And the way to get rid of stuff is to, to uh, copy it and then just push your Q button to make it disappear. And actually this thing I was holding on to. Um, I'm going to, oh, I should see, I, I'm going to take it. I'm going to exit this time, which is cut, and it'll tell me that I'm cutting it. And I'm just going to put it down here just uh, as a reference, just to make sure I don't forget anything. Uh, so there. So that takes care of step two in our make almost anything machine, which is basically, as I said, um, taking your shape and adding your color to it and outputting your first layer of your shape. So that's the way that works. And then we'll, like I said, in the next episode, we'll just copy and paste the whole unit on and that will be our second shape and then from there it's just a matter of doing the same thing over and over again and then we have to start to get uh, stacking with our next shape which is what we do over here in this one we take our first shape uh, here we break it down stack it with our second shape which is um, our, you know uh, when I say shape, I mean it's first half of the first shape, second half of the first shape becomes our first shape, and then our first shape gets matched with our second shape, and then our second shape gets ma matched with our third and fourth shapes. So you've got basically two sets. You've got your one, two, and your three, four, and your one, two, you know, goes down to uh, one shape, and then your three, four goes down to another shape, and then you stack the one, two on the three, four, or the or the 3, 4 on the 1, 2, however you want to look at it. Uh, but we'll get into all that in a future episode. But I did want to show you this method of uh, blending here that I did in my this original machine. It's basically the same thing, except this one actually stores all the colors all the time. Um, this one has all the colors running up through it and then triggers them up here at this level out of the storage boxes. Uh, which is another way that you can do it. I've seen many different ways to do it online. Uh, but um, as long as you're running a full belt of the item that you need, then this is kind of a non-issue. You can you just decide how you want to do that. Uh, but anyway, that is it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, like I said, leave them in the comments. And I will try to answer them best I can. Uh, but otherwise, we'll see you in the next episode. Let me know that, uh, that you uh, want to see a next episode, and I will do it. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.